Hi everybody. Welcome back to Studying the Masters with Alicia Diane Art. <clears throat> I need something to drink. Got a <clears throat> frog in my throat. Me, 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 me. <laughs> Hopefully I have some coffee left. Just enough. Oh, sorry about that. But we are live, live somewhat TV. And um, if you're watching this from Facebook, hello. If you're watching this later time on YouTube, hello. We're going to be continuing this Mary, Bla Mary Blair piece from Song of the South. Um, we started it the other day. Um, it was Monday. Today is Wednesday on the 18th. And um, I was having some laggy issues with my um, Photoshop and computer and stuff like that. So that's why I saved the painting aspect of this piece for today. And my computer is doing much better. I reset my Wacom pen um, so that it will not be lagging today. Um, all goes well. <laughs> and um, we're going to go ahead and get started. So let us go right into it. Open up my reference. I'm going to be using um, these brushes. Actually, they are by Aaron Blaze. I don't know if you guys know uh, who he is. He is a pretty popular um, character designer, I guess. Um, character designer, director, animator, um, all of that, all of that stuff. So I'm going to grab this color, I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. I'm just going to just build up to what I want this to be. I'm going to use a couple of different pens. And feel free to follow along as I go. Using a uh, they're called, these are actually watercolor brushes. But you can use whatever brushes are in Photoshop, whatever ones that you feel good with. Um, by no means you have to use the exact same brushes that I'm using. I'm going to change them around a bit, try and get the colors from the original piece. As close to it as possible, it doesn't need to be like perfect. I just want to get it, I just want to get that same feeling as the original painting, pretty much. How are you guys doing today? Um, the last time I talked to you guys, I did volunteer at the zoo, and I am going to be going to volunteer again um, next week. I'm excited about that. I just signed up right now, so it's fresh on my mind. I don't know. I like working with animals. I actually got an idea um, because I met, <laughs> I don't know if I told you, I don't know, I didn't think I talked about it. I met the same species of goat or the same breed of goat that's in my comic. And it was weird because I'd never seen that goat in person before and I hadn't looked up how the size, the scale of that particular breed, and if I tell you this goat was huge, it was like tall, and they said it weighed like 200 pounds, I'm like, I told the lady there, I was like, dang, I've never seen a Samin goat before, Samin, Samin, I think it's called Samin, and that's, it's like S-A-A-N-E-N, -E but I've never seen, you know, I looked up the goat, I was looking up different goats that um, are popular in Kenya and um, I found that goat and it's a, actually like a Swiss goat but like they were brought um, to different African countries but anyway that's like really, you know, I'm getting so beyond the point but anyway I'd never seen this goat in person and I was like oh my god this thing's huge she's like yeah I think the same goats are basically like the the um great dane of goats and I was just like Oh no, 
because in my story, the goat is not nearly that big, and it's just a very, um, it's a very humble looking goat. It's it's definitely not a great dane of goats of any kind, and so I was like, what am I gonna do? But there was another goat there, and it was called um, a Nigerian pygmy goat. Which actually, I think the more common term is the Nigerian um, dwarf goat. And I was like, hmm, that one looks a lot like the goat I have in my story. I think I'm going to change the species because it makes more sense um, for my story and for the scale of the actual animal that it's more along the sides of this one. And so I decided I'm going to... <laughs> change the goat, I know it's such a random thing, I'm going to change the goat species for the goat in my comic. And if you are watching me the first time and you are never hearing about this comic that I'm making, then I'm sorry, but I can um, quickly, I guess, explain to you a little bit. I'm making this comic, it's called JD's Story, and the first book is called In the Beginning, and um, it's coming out within the next few months. I'm working on the color right now, but everything else is done. And it's my first graphic novel, and it's all based in this um, fictional town that I created that's based off of a real town in Kenya called um, Kwale. And so the story is about a girl who is trying to figure out her fate while there's a lot of turmoil happening in her town. There's a lot of religious tension and um, there's this influence of these American people or I'm calling them Westerners in my story, but it's, it's really about a young girl trying to find her own personal way in the middle of this tension. And um, she has a a pet slash um, dairy goat, which a lot of people have goats as a form of um, income because they can raise the goats and they can sell the milk and so that's basically kind of like how any farmer would have in this country or in any other country they would have. So I was looking up goat species and I found out that I'm going to have to change the one that I have, which is interesting. <laughs> I know, it's such a weird thing. It's like, oh yeah, I was volunteering at the goat and gave me different ideas about my comic. <laughs> but I mean, it's good to know because I would have never like randomly come across with this goat and I would have never known like, you know, that that goat got so humongous. I, mean, I had no no idea. But anyway, that's what happened in my neck of the woods. <laughs> what about you guys? Have you made any goats lately? Oh, I'm just kidding. It's such a random thing though. I don't know. So anyway, my topic today I don't think I have a topic today. <laughs> I will create a topic for the day, one way or another. Oops. I hate when it brings the ruler down like that. I don't need it. Go away. Um, let's see, what are we going to talk about? Um. I don't know, I've been having a couple, trying to think, I have a couple of different things on my mind. Um, I actually read this good devotional this morning, and it was about fear. And I think I'll share that with you guys. It said, you know, fears, you're feeling, fear is not, I, I don't want to butcher it, but like, it basically was saying that like, your fears are not necessarily reality. Like you can have a fear of something, but just because you have a fear of something doesn't mean that um, that thing that you're afraid of 
is really gonna affect you or that thing that you're afraid of is is really gonna take you over or take you out I think there's a good um, I guess sense of healthy fear and I think there's a good um, in learning from our mistakes and learning from our past and when we have faced similar situations that you can have fear I think it's good to not neglect your feelings because that leads to suppressed emotions and that's just bad news for everybody but I think that we shouldn't let our fears prevent us from going after what we really want and I think I might have touched on that the last time that we were talking a few days ago but I just it just really hit me because it was something that I really need to hear because it's something that I actually deal with is like um, a lot of anxiety and a lot of um, fears about um, future especially about things that are um, really important to me or you know things that I feel are I mean like I don't know things that are really important to me but maybe I've experienced defeat in that area, I can become very frightened and anxious about them. And so that was really helpful for me. It was all about, um, there's a scripture in there, I don't know if you guys are into reading scriptures or not, but um, it was a really good one. And it was, uh, I have to get the number. See if I can get it very quickly. It is. Let's see. I keep on seeing them off, but but John fourteen twenty six and twenty seven. And now I'm just gonna read it. If you're not if you're not a religious person, I totally get it, but. I mean, you can just take, like, what makes sense to you, whatever, you know, doesn't make sense to you or is not important to you. You can just leave that behind. It said, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. And that is my little, <laughs> that was the scripture that I read today. It was, um, I don't know, I really liked it. And basically the whole um, devotional day was like about that. And about like, you know, not letting your fear, I guess, overtake you. Does that make sense? I wonder what you guys think about stuff like that. Just curious, out of my curiosities, I wonder how you all take it. I just have lots of thoughts. I like, I like encouraging thoughts. Um, it can be from scripture. It could be from a book. It could be like a motivation. It could be all manner of things. I like hearing things that kind of give me, hmm, let me think, think twice about stuff and make me like feel encouraged about stuff. I'm gonna add in very soon. There's like all these different colors here, but it's all like, I don't know. I want to like, let's see. Yeah. Okay. So I was just wondering, like, you know, do you guys have ever have 
thoughts of things. That looks really good. Whether it's encouraging or discouraging thoughts about different things. And like what gets you through? What are the types of things that maybe we might read or listen to to get encouragement? Because I think we all kind of need something. Either that we're listening to or that it's going to inspire us. Give us some type of you know, hope or something. We all need like something. To power through. <laughs> if we're doing anything challenging anyway. You need something to like give you that encouragement. To like, okay, perhaps I can do this. Perhaps it's not as hard as I I'm envisioning it being in my head. And I was talking about goals the other day when I was on and setting goals. Like, I don't think it was more setting like specific career goals, but it could be. But I think goals are important to have in like every area of your life. You can have definitely personal goals, spiritual goals, self growth, things like that. Tunnel is pretty dark. I'm trying to find the right color. It's still making it look like it's kind of like traditional. I think I want curry today. <laughs> That's so random. I, I don't know why. What that has to do with anything that I'm doing right now it doesn't at all. But I just like mm, curry. <laughs> oh, I think I'm gonna make myself like some curry. Some Thai curry or something. So random. Thai has become one of my favorite foods, I think. I think I really love Thai food because the Thai people have really, more than anybody else, have been so accommodating for vegan people. <laughs> I've seen more Thai vegan restaurants than any other, I think, nationality of food. And that's why I'm really setting, I really like over the last couple of years have been sorely loving Thai food. Because they accommodate my vegan palate. <laughs> so, whatever. Nothing to do with anything with art, but it is about lunchtime, so just to let you guys know where my head's at. Where my mind is, it's on curry, but I've always loved curry. I grew up in Brooklyn, we followed my Trinidadian friends, and they totally got me hooked on curry. Filipino, and all those things. I love Caribbean food, but Caribbean people unfortunately don't have as much vegan restaurants as I would like to see. Especially like I've been living in the West for the last several years. For the last 10 years I've been living in the West. Um, even though right now I'm in Georgia, I've been living on the West Coast for several years and there's basically hardly any Caribbean restaurants on the West Coast. So I have been doing, getting my curry fix from Thai restaurants. Pots that I want to make, probably a little more prominent, just so much texture, wanting to have to add that much texture to everything, <laughs> that's going to be hard, but let's see, it's like a shed, but it's also um, the bridge that goes across the Pond here. Hmm. 
I'm going to add, even though it's not really seeing, I'm going to add a little bit of texture to this tree here. Because I want to do a little something. Alright. So now I'm going to go to a different layer. Now I'm in this background. I'm going to get this. I'm going to make this darker. Do some texture on this grass here. This is a wonky brush. It's really weird looking. Oops, that's too big. Alright, I'm gonna maybe, let's see. It's really weird though. I'm gonna try to remember to speak up because when I started like drawing, I just like kind of talk to myself and I gotta remember that I'm recording. So, forgive me if I forget from time to time. It's a thing that I do. It's not intentional. I want you to hear what I'm saying. I just have a tendency to, like, zone in. Oh, yeah. I'm recording this one. Yeah. Tend to forget that I'm recording sometimes. I'm not forgetting that I'm recording, just, like... I don't know. You know what I mean. Hopefully. Mm. I feel like that took away my texture. Okay, with it getting a little bit on the side because I think I'm going to go over that anyway with another color. So I'm going to take that down a little bit more peachy. And I'm going to give the road some texture. Can I dig this color? And I'm going to spread this around a little bit. some more though. Make some more variation of colors. Make it a little bit more of a dusty brown. And use more gray and a little bit darker. Just add like these kind of like almost like dirt patches. Sorry, I'm going to have to call you back. Too much texture now. Hmm. 
also have these canvas brushes. I was going to stick to to the watercolor brushes, but now I've kind of tinted. So try some of these other ones. Get too carried away though. Let me blend that back a little bit. Got a voicemail. Okay, I got a voicemail from my son's school. I will need to call them back. All right, let's see. All right, so I need to add some more textures. This is probably the most like painterly uh, Mary Blair piece that I've made since since we began. It feels like there's a lot of um, it gets flow from one color to the next. A lot of variation, like subtle variation in the color. As you know, we're not shooting for perfection here. We're just shooting for some nice variation. I'm going to go ahead in with just really little brush. I'm going to take these like little plants, the cotton peel that's back there. I'm going to actually do that little by little by hand. It feels a little bit more natural. And I'm going to be a little bit darker over here. Adding these I just wanted to see just now if my people in the back were on the same way or a different way. They were on a different way. So I'm gonna just add these in. Little bits of plant. That's scattered all over the place. And for the cotton, I'm going to use almost white, but not quite white. And just go over these spots. It's really a pale green that I'm using. Just because it's already over the green. And when you paint like that, it would probably end up being like a pale green anyway. Just trying to think like how it would actually work if it was 
actually traditional painting. I like to kind of think of it that way. And I think the only way you can really do that is to practice with traditional painting. If you've never done a traditional painting, just get yourself a, a pack of acrylics for $20. You can make a painting in an hour. Just do something really simple. Watch a... I don't know if I can... I don't have any acrylic tutorials, but I think I can... That's something I can do if you guys are interested in an acrylic tutorial. But if you don't want to wait for that, um, there's plenty on YouTube, but I can do that at some point if more people are interested. Alright, so there's the cotton field. gaps because I did use the lasso tool when I went around it the first time. I want to just try and fill in some of that. Give me a good gaps. Okay, starting to get there, starting to make some progress. I'm gonna go and Just a little bit of texture, it's like almost, I can't even hardly see it. It's just subtle. I want to go ahead and I'm use my lasso tool again to make this sort of a nice Because I am using a clipping mask, it doesn't have to be exactly... I can go a little bit further into the water because um, that's as far as this layer is. Be going around, grabbing different spots. And I did mean that color to make it look like it's um like this is earth here. All right, so I need another topic to talk about because I'm going to be doing this for a minute. So let's see, what else can we cover today? Traveling. Are you guys traveling for the holiday? I know that Thanksgiving is coming up. And i um, actually hearing a lot of people saying that they are going to travel. And um, I don't know, I'm concerned because it looks like the COVIDs are not getting any better right about now. Um, no, I don't think it's a hoax. Unfortunately, I do know some people that have it that are not doing very well right now. And I really don't know what to do. I don't, it's nothing you can do because when people have COVID, you can't even visit them in the hospital. It's just, you know, they're just kind of 
there alone and <laughs> I don't want to talk about something like so sad but um, I'm concerned for my viewers who might be thinking about traveling and if you are um, I would challenge you to not travel even if you are by yourself right now I know that's hard um, I'm not by myself right now but I have been um, before and I know what that feels like it's really not a good feeling to celebrate anything especially something major um, being by yourself uh, the good thing is um, that nowadays we do have zoom I know everybody's kind of sick of zoom at this point but at least we have it, at least it's a resource that we have that we can use. I know it's not really fun, but it's better than getting the COVID. I just hope that you guys find some safe ways to to um, celebrate Thanksgiving and for Christmas this year and other holidays that are coming up also. Um, I just, I'm just, I know everyone is ready. I gotta say, I'm ready for this COVID thing to be over. Um, I was just talking to my son yesterday, and he's having a hard time, like, because it's, it's just challenging just getting used to this all. And as much as we like to say, well, this is just you know, normal, this is how it is, it doesn't mean that it's easy. And it doesn't the longer that we're in it, it's easier. I think, if anything, we're just more and more frustrated. I know I feel like, kind of like, all right, can we get back to normal a little bit right now? Um, but, oh, well, we'll just have to see. It's just, it's just hard for everybody. I get it, especially if you're like, um, professional or I don't want to sound generic but like if you're a central worker it's, I can't imagine like it's got to be like even more hard because like people just expect you to do your job right it's not even like a thing where people are everyone is just so grateful because everyone is kind of just expecting you to do your job and that's that's hard and I just want to say thank you to those of you who are essential workers and um, know that the rest of us appreciate you like I said I don't want to sound like what you guys hear from everybody but oh I don't know I don't really talk about certain I don't talk about too many I guess sensitive subjects here and sometimes there's different things going on and I do feel like I want to talk about even if it's just to mention it for a moment just to let people know that I am aware these things affect me just like they affect all the other people um, I'm grateful that we have a new president coming in I just hope that the transition starts to go smoother but I am grateful for that. Um, whether you are happy or not about the new president, it's just all, I think we should all just try and, you know, do the best that we can with whatever we have. Alright, so we're getting there, we're getting there, making progress steadily, steadily, little by little. Progress is being made. I'm gonna grab a nice red color. Nice orange color actually, but I'm just gonna make it more red. Going to be working on these kind 
gonna be working on do some bushes here in the background. Get a brush size that I like. Let's see what that looks like. I like that. I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. I like that. That's kind of what I wanted. And then here are my fields. These are very fall colors. I was talking about the color palette last time. Maybe you guys know, like these are very, very fall like colors. You like that? Mm. I was wondering why I was attracted to this thing. It's like a, it's like a big old pumpkin latte. <laughs> Almost. Put a little bit of down there. Pumpkin spice. A little bit of pumpkin spice. Why did they talk like that in old films? <laughs> that was horrible. But you know, they used to talk like that, like, I don't know. That's what it sounds like to me anyway. Yeah, you guys. I gotta go, gotta go see you. <laughs> so bad. I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm embarrassing myself. Not really, but kind of. That's how it sounds to me. I'm watching 101 Dalmatians. I don't even know if it's that old. It's old enough for them to talk like that, though. One of the dogs actually talked like that. Oh, Paro. <laughs> I think it was the Great Dane or somebody like that. Oh, that looks very fall like. I love it. It reminds me right now because it is from Song of the South. It's like a Georgia something. And it reminds me of like all the colors that I'm seeing right now. Which is pretty cool. Which is pretty cool. Especially considering this is the first. Um, really like fall, fall fall that I've seen in a long time. I told you guys I've been in on the west for the last few years and there's not a whole lot of, not a lot of fall up on the west coast. Not a lot of fall. It is here. And it's, it's nice to see the colors and the leaves and all that. Even if it's just a little bit. And even if it's just for a short time. Alrighty, I'm going to start my ocean, well, not my ocean, but my lake. I'm going to add my lake colors. It's a nice gold yellow color. There's several colors in this too, but that gold color is really prominent. Ooh, that's nice. Do it now! I don't care how you kill a little beast. It's horrible. She doesn't even care about the puppies. Of course she doesn't. That's why her name is Cruella. Because she is Cruella. Oh, 
is fun. I feel like there's a coloring book. This is what it feels like. I don't know. It feels like it really feels like doing a coloring book. <laughs> I guess that's like really the one of the fun parts of um, studying other artists because it's you know, you're learning. It's like fun learning. It's like art class. <laughs> art class is always the fun learning. It was for me when I had art, finally, which I didn't really have until college. <laughs> uh, boy. Alright, I'm going to make, I want like a peach color now. I want like a peachy, peach is a little bit more, I mean pink, it's like an orange, but it's like a pinky orange. And let's see. I started meditating recently. Actually, I've been meditating for a while, um, but, but I just recently started a new meditation app, I guess, guided meditation, because I was just doing like the Apple Watch breaths, like for, that was just like my meditation, but guided meditation is so much better. Like I still use my Apple Watch for the breaths, but then I also use my app and it like talks me through it. It's so nice. It's so nice to have some guided meditation. It just feels feels really nice. <laughs> I don't know, there's just something really soothing about it. It just feels like the way the guy talks, he's like, yeah, and then <laughs> and then and then relax. I just feel like, ah, oh, this guy knows me. <laughs> I feel so at ease. But it's true, I feel really, I don't know, I feel pretty good about meditating when I meditate a couple days a week. I would really like, I think this would be fun to do as a, a crow painting actually. I think it would be really fun. done but I just want to have some details but first I'm going to do my sky and the sky is it's just like Georgia too it's so cloudy like that too so much of the time it looks kind of like how the east coast is the sky is kind of cloudy and sunny and not this color it's just darker and the sky is just like these rain clouds <clears throat> type of brush. I need a more spackly type of brush. If I can find one. Sorry, am I talking to myself again? I do that all the time. I think that might work. Ah, like feels right. That feels more like rain cloud. Weather, temperous weather, cloud. Love it, love it, love it. And these are also like the And glaze cloud um, watercolor brushes, but like I said, you just whatever brushes that you like. Domestica, they I took a class with Domestica, and they also gave me brushes, which I they gave a lot of brushes. I took um, Joel Santana's class, and it came with all of his brushes, and that was real. It was a big package of brushes. Was also a really good one. Some of them were very similar to the Aaron Blazes ones. So, I mean, get your brushes wherever you get them from. But nice to have some, but when you have too many, it feels confusing. So, 
just try and familiarize myself with the ones that I like the most, but still, I wish they were labeled a little bit easier because it's I'm still like it's still like it makes it more the like more brushes have makes it more complicated. I think. I don't know which brush to use. I don't remember was that one brush I used at one time. All right, I'm gonna have to have a get like a a system for organizing my brushes. Looks like it's looks like it's really like the clouds are coming down. Maybe you're looking in the distance and you see where it's, where it's not raining where you are, but it's raining in the distance. You can really see that in big sky areas, like in the west. Like you can see that in Texas, like when it's, the sky is so open. Any place where the sky is really open, like the example I can think of right now is like Texas or New Mexico, where you can see like the whole sky and then like off in the distance somewhere it'll be raining and you just see like this gray, like like an extended cloud, that's what it looks like from a distance. I don't know what this looks like in this picture. Okay, we are getting close to the finish line. I'm gonna grab a different brush, I'm gonna add some details. The ripples of the water. This is such a fun game. I have to say that again. <laughs> I don't know, like, doing it is actually more fun than I thought it was going to be. It's just the colors are so fun and just so much texture. It's just exciting to me. This one actually surprised me. I didn't think it would be nearly so fun as it is. I was just kind of like, hmm, this one is different than what I've been doing. Let me try this out. Maybe it just looks maybe like, man, this is amazing. I didn't think I was going to love it so much. Just add details. What else can we talk about today? Hmm. Thanks, Jim. I talked about that a little bit. What else has been on my mind? Hmm, I don't know if there's been anything on my mind or just everything on my mind. <laughs> my mind on my mind and my money on my mind. <laughs> so cheesy. I know. I'm not trying to be cheesy. Oops. I'm gonna make another layer up here. Just a different. Maybe I should just go right on this one and then do that. Um, I'm gonna make a separate layer. Looks like it's going to be small and then it's humongous. I don't understand. Looks like it's just going to be this one little thing and then it's like huge.
I don't know. I don't know if this is the one I want. This is the right brush for me. Maybe it can work. Let's see. get these roots to come. They come. The ends of them are like black. I'm trying to figure this part out. I don't think I've seen I don't know. It just sounds seems so different like this tree here has like these black roots that go into the maybe they're supposed to be symbolic, I don't know. That though, if it is, I don't know if she thought that far ahead, but it's pretty cool. It's the black roots of the water of the tree. I like that. Seems fitting. All right, we are almost done. Almost done. Um. some texture to this as well and we'll do that with Flat and foreign to the rest of the paint. Alright, and now let's color our people. And let's see how I want to do this. I think I'm going to use. to tree. It's not exactly what I want. Maybe the pastel would be good for this. That feels better. Much better. Maybe not many times enough. I must have pushed undo too many times. Peeling off my layer. It's locked now. Okay, let me find this pale blue paint. Around where the feelings are going. And 
this is the part where I will get a little bit silent, but I still do. So a little bit more focus required for this particular segment. Going into some details. Back in. And we have this red stripe on his shirt. American colors, I just realized that red and white stripes and the blue. Damn, that's clever. Very clever of Mary. White stand out a little bit from the bark of the tree, so it doesn't blend in too much. Okay, I like that. I quite like it. And now for the back, the people in the back. Colors I'm having now is like the in the field, doing their work. Her hand and arm blank so we can see her color. Oh, I love this painting so much. It's just like right up my alley. It's just like something that I would want to paint, something that I would probably paint. Like, it's like my own style. I just think this reminds me more than any of the other ones that I've done so far of my own style of art. I love this type of stuff. There's nothing magical about it, there's nothing crazy about it, it's just loose and whimsical and just represents just everyday moment in time. people of color and I really like that. And oh, let's add a little bit more details to this house over here.
tells me I need to add these details. I need to add a little bit. Things seem a little bit quiet. But we're at the end. We're at the finish line. We're right there, guys. Oh yeah, speaking of finish lines, I am gonna be running my first 5K or my first race ever on Thanksgiving. It's a virtual run. I've never done a run before. I run a lot, but I've never done a run like a race run. So I'm pretty excited about it. I feel quite happy about it. It's something that's really new for me. It's like really new. I really don't like competitive sports at all. That's why I've never done a race, but I'm realizing that, you know, a race, doing an actual race is not really about being in competition or else I wouldn't be doing it because I hate <laughs> competitions because I don't like to lose. And I don't get that much from running anyway, so. Not in a competitive sense. I don't like, I'm a people pleaser, so I, I don't feel great <laughs> making other people lose anyway, so. Either way, you don't really like competitions like that. But once I discovered that doing a you know a run is just a way that people can connect and celebrate fitness or raise money for different causes and things like that, then I was like, maybe, maybe that could be something I'm interested in. So. I decided to participate and um, you can actually see if there's one in your area or you can join the one that I joined which is the Los Angeles tr Turkey Trot and you can do it from anywhere you just have to sign up because um, it's all virtual because of the COVID so you can definitely sign up and participate if you're interested in doing your first run also or if you've done them before I don't know but I've never done it before and I'm excited that's pretty fun that looks that looks a lot better with those details Alright, I'm just going to add the little spokes that's holding up the bridge in the water. It's a basically black color holding up this bridge. Make it a little bit more like a dark brown arena. Make the pitch black look a little bit too harsh for my taste. Basically putting these spokes up to look like this bridge is not just floating in the middle of nowhere But it's actually being held up by these spokes or whatever they're called I don't know what the proper name for them is but I think spokes seems right I really want to play World of Warcraft Every painting I do is reminding me of World of Warcraft for some reason This reminds me of like the farmstead like that you go to and there's like those hyena people that you have to kill <laughs> if you guys ever played world of warcraft it will make sense if you never played it will sound completely insane but there are these hyena people that you have to kill and they are always on the farm there's a couple of those I'm gonna use like a light gray so it's not like a pure pure white. Like a, kind of like a light gray color. It's just the details at this point. It's 
It's so cool. Oh my god. I need to make some paintings like this. I feel inspired to make my own paintings like this. I feel inspired today by this setting the matches. It's so dang fun. Alright guys, I think we're just about done on the end of done. This was an amazing setting the masters. I had a great time. I hope that you guys did as well. Um, you guys can check out on my page the first video for this. Um, part one it should be on there. It will be on there on my Facebook page and soon to come to YouTube. But thank you guys so much for watching and for coming back to this channel. It's been amazing just sharing this kind of stuff with you all. And I'm really, really grateful for that. So thank you guys so much. Um, I will be back before you know it. <laughs> but until I see you next time, be grateful, live balanced, and be yourself. And if I don't see you before Thanksgiving, have a great turkey or tofurkey day. And I'll see you guys next time. So peace in the Middle East and everywhere else. Bye-bye. <laughs>